Hi, in the last month or so I've taken up a new interest, namely baking, baking of regular bread, but also of puff pastry. So this is one example, you might recognize it, it's a croissant, a croissant, and in order to make those I need to cut the sheet of dough into triangular shapes. I believe the classic croissant has dimensions of about 100 millimeters by 210 millimeters. Mine has 203 millimeters and the sheet should be about 4 millimeters thick. I'm looking for a shape like this. That slot at the bottom will make for a small air pocket in the center of the croissant, which helps with uh, an even bake, is what I understood. And then if you roll the croissant, you will get something like this. To cut out these shapes, I've come up with a thing like this, a croissant cutter. It consists of the center part, that's this long part with these triangular circular shapes. And then it has a main shaft in the middle, out of steel, a small bushing. And then the top part, because I cannot print this standing up in this orientation with that cap in place, that would lead to printing overhang. And then finally a handle and that will get clamped with a small screw and of course the exact same handle on the other side. So when it's put together it should look something like this and rolling out the dough then hopefully will look something like this and at the end I'll hopefully get some nice croissants. Printing of the first two parts has finished. It's looking very good, if I do say so myself. Very nice and shiny. Hopefully that edge is sharp enough, but we'll find out. I'm pretty happy with this print. It took about nine and a half hours. I'll take this off of the print bed and I'll start printing the two handles. I was just checking the camera through the browser and noticed that my print was failing. So I will abort this print. Pause. And there it goes. Z up a couple of millimeters. Okay. And home the X. Home the Y. I will take these parts off the print bed. I'll assemble them both so I can use the cutter. Meanwhile I will print a replacement handle. Okay. I've prepared the parts. I've cut a couple of these bushings off of a longer plastic bar. It feels kind of slippery so this seemed to me to be the ideal bushing material. I press fit it into the PLA part right here and I've used the drill to drill it to size. And now the bar fits the shaft and it turns relatively freely. What I need to do now is glue this end cap on top of the cutter. For that I need a bit of super glue, a small piece of paper or two. Okay, a couple of drops of super glue right there, right there. And there, and there, and there should be enough. I need my persuader. Let's put it on here. I already checked the fit. It should fit just fine. It's on there. There's almost no gap visible. I'm pretty happy with that. I'll let that sit and dry for a minute. Always clean your nozzle before putting the cap back. One of these handles failed, came off of the print bed. The printer is running a new print in the background. So I'll put this one on right now and I'll replace it later. One drill, one drill bit. That's it. The other one. 
This, okay. This is how it goes together. Oh, good enough. For now, this will do, I think. Let's go make some croissant. I made this batch of dough in the previous two days and I gave it uh, two triple folds. I kept it in the refrigerator and now it's sticking to the paper really well. I'm reusing all the dough. I'll do a last triple fold. First I roll it out somewhat using some flour to prevent it from sticking. Flipping it over and rolling out some more, making it nice and square or rectangular. That's one third flipped over. Here I'm showing uh, that the butter is not distributed evenly. Still I'm going to bake it. We'll see how that turns out. More flour. Anti-sticking here. I'm checking against the width of the cutter. The dough needs to be wide enough to be cut by that cutter. So I'm adjusting the width. That dough acts a bit like uh, like chewing gum it, uh, or like rubber. You flatten it and it will uh, it will stretch back or still trying to get the width okay those two wood strips you see uh, I use to ensure that I that I roll it out to an even thickness those strips are about four millimeters thick So this leads to a nice and even thickness and I should be ready to start cutting. This entire video is about the dough cutter, so I'm keeping this part of the video real time. Here I'm trying to determine the best place to start cutting. And apparently this is where I will cut. Trying to find the right orientation and now press down firmly and roll it along slowly. And it seems to do the cutting just fine. That's where I stop. I think I end up with seven croissants, and the rest will be used to make some Danish like pastry. The, the cut was not entirely completed, so I'm realigning the cutter. Of course, I use I should have used a knife. This part is sped up again, and here you see me rolling the croissants, counting the number of bumps. Classically, that should be seven, and these. These have seven bumps, so the process is stretching the triangle a little and then rolling it up. Should be five turns and seven bumps. Here I'm putting two of the croissants into a plastic bag to keep them in the freezer to, uh, to bake them at a later date. Here I'm reattaching parts of the dough to make one sheet. And the yellow stuff is kind of uh, custard. 
that I will spread out. And then the sheet of dough will be rolled up. And mixing and mixing the custard to make it loose and kind of fluffy. Spreading it out. I will be adding some raisins as well. Here I'm preparing the one egg with a bit of milk. Here come the raisins. I kept them in water. And now I'm spreading them out as evenly as I can. Should have been a bit more. The tear in the dough is because of poor uh, reconnecting. Here I'm trying to create a seam to close the, the loop. And now I'm slicing it into about two centimeter wide slices and place them on the baking tin again i put a couple of them into a plastic bag and into the freezer to be baked at a later date here i'm placing them on the baking tin i'm getting a second tin because this one is full. And here comes the egg. Like I said, egg with a bit of milk. And I spread that around. I cover everything with that mixture. Those ones as well. And now I'll cover it with a cloth and let it proof for about half an hour. After that I can start baking. So the cutter uh, did just fine. It only needs a little bit of cleanup, but I'm very happy with the performance. So, nice layers, a very nice smell, so time to eat. Thanks for watching, until next time.